the only brushes you need as a digital artist? So ever since I started creating and uploading art on the internet, the question I get asked the most besides can you draw me is what brushes do you use? So finally, I'm putting my foot down and I'm settling this once and for all with a video going through the brushes that I personally can't live without. Now, no brush is going to suddenly transform you into the chosen one, but the brushes you use will affect the way that you draw and paint. So choosing the right brushes for your own specific needs is important. Therefore, in this video, I want to explain what brushes I use, why I like them, and how I use them. Can you guess what the first brush is going to be? I'll give you a second. The first brush we'll be talking about is... That's right, the default hard round brush. There's a reason why this brush comes with virtually every digital art software, folks. I use this brush for like 92.538% of my work. You can sketch with it, you can do your line art with it, and you can paint with it. This is the brush I keep coming back to time and time again. It's simple, it's versatile, it's reliable. You can use this brush for everything. I use a couple of variations of the hard round brush and there's only really one difference between all of them and that's the minimum opacity setting. One is at 0% so that if I press lightly, I'll get really low opacity or semi-transparency. This is great for sketching and subtle painting and rendering. The other hard round brushes have higher minimum pressure opacity settings, which results in more opaque or in other words, solid brush strokes, which I tend to use in the paint over phase when I want to refine the line art and the painting that I've primarily done with the lower opacity round brush. Something I like to do when using this brush to sketch is increasing the pixel size to about 20 to 25 and turning the flow down to about 20%. This makes it so you can sketch really lightly. I find this helps put me in the right mindset when initially sketching things out. It forces me to focus on what's important, which is getting the overall shape and placement of features correct. Once it's time to do the clean line art, I shrink the brush size down to about 10 pixels and turn the flow back up to 100%. I primarily paint and draw with pen pressure size turned off, meaning that there's no tapering of my brush strokes. I prefer to keep my brush strokes at 100% thickness throughout the majority of the drawing and painting process. I find that there's no need for it until the very end of the painting. Then I might turn it on to put in some sharp lines to polish off the picture. The perfect companion to the hard round brush is the soft round brush, also known as the airbrush. I have two variations that I use. One is the regular default soft round brush, and the other is the soft round brush, but I've tweaked it to have a little bit of texture. This comes in handy when you want to add some subtle texture to your work. I like to have the soft round brush set as my default eraser tool. I find it feels a little bit more like an actual traditional eraser. Great for when I'm inevitably having to erase my many mistakes whilst drawing. The airbrush often gets a bad rap because of the tendency of beginners to misuse it. However, it is a highly useful tool to introduce gradients to your work, to blend and soften when needed. Honestly, between this brush and the hard round brush, you're pretty much set for all your drawing, painting and blending needs. However, there are a couple of other brushes that I find really useful, so let's move on to the next one. I like using oval brushes because they give you these nice big flat brush strokes which can make for really good shadow and highlight shapes. Another thing I found they're useful for is for painting in hair strands. They have more of a visually interesting shape than the round brush does. I have three variations of this brush, all three at different angles and degrees of thickness. For those of you who are more into the painterly look, this might just be the brush for you. I find this is a great all-rounder brush for painting. It's really easy to go back and forth between laying in hard edge brush strokes and then blending. Seriously, blending is an absolute breeze with this brush. I like this particular brush because, just like with the oval brushes, you can get some nice angular brush strokes in there, making it easier to lay in those plane changes. I'll often use this brush when I want to quickly lay in some bold lighting. And finally, I like shrinking down the brush and using it to put in some small hair strands. 
I like the sharp, scratchy brush strokes you get with this ink brush. I find it helps with adding in the finishing touches for things like the hair, eyebrows, and eyelashes. I'll also sometimes use it for specular highlights. Another thing I like using this brush for is erasing things when I want to leave a bit of a rough edge, carving out some shapes. It can even be used as a texture brush if you turn on pressure opacity and turn off pressure size. The smudge brush is used for, well, smudging. Shocking, I know. I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. Nothing much to say with this one. I have this brush set as my default smudge tool. There is one thing I want to talk about when it comes to the smudge brush though, and that's how much the default smudge brush settings absolutely suck in Photoshop. I mean, look at this. So if you're a fellow Photoshop user, here are a few tips to take your smudge tool from this to this. Firstly, I recommend using one of the default spatter brushes instead of the round brush. Secondly, enable transfer, shape dynamics, and most importantly of all, enable scattering. Set the smudge strength to around about 30% and you're good to go. I call this the texture comb because it's like a comb. Plus I primarily use it for adding some flair to my hair. I'll typically use this brush at the very end of a painting, adding in a few strategic brush strokes to polish the hair a bit. Adds a bit of visual interest and gives the illusion of more detail. Just don't overdo it though. I think that choosing just a few brushes to work with is optimal for your workflow. You don't want to be having to constantly be swapping back and forth between a million different types of brushes. Also, your work can start to look really messy and chaotic if you're using a whole bunch of conflicting brushes. So just pick out a couple and stick with them for a while. Okay, so just a brief summary. I use the hard round brush for sketching, line art, and the bulk of the painting process. This is my most used brush. The next brush is the soft round brush used for soft shading and blending. The oval brushes for laying in some aesthetic shapes. The paint brush for when I want to go for a more painterly textured look. The ink brush for when I want to get some sharp, scratchy lines and highlights. The smudge brush for smudging the heck out of things. And finally, the texture comb to add some finishing touches to the hair and maybe anywhere else I think it looks good. I'll be making the brushes I used in this video available as a free download, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Just know that depending on what art program you're using, I can't guarantee they're all gonna work exactly the same. These are Photoshop brushes. But the thing is, all of these brushes are pretty common across all the different art programs. So you'll most likely already have a very similar brush available in whatever art software you're currently using. All right, so now with all that being said, stop asking what brushes I use. Love you.